Hello everyone, welcome back. So I am Dr. Nisha Gard. In continuation to the previous topic, today we will be discussing the materials used for tooth whitening that is bleaching agents for teeth. So let's start. As we have already discussed, the tooth whitening or bleaching of the teeth is basically lightening of the color of the tooth and it is done by applying a chemical agent. And what does that chemical agent do? It oxidizes the organic pigmentation present in the tooth. See, various materials are available nowadays to bleach the teeth. The basic ingredient of tooth whitening agents are the hydrogen peroxide, sodium perborate and carbamide peroxide. We will discuss all these agents in detail now. First of all, we will discuss the hydrogen peroxide. See, it's the simplest peroxide and is a colorless liquid in its pure form. Hydrogen peroxide is a very strong oxidizing agent. What does that mean? It means that it easily dissociates into high water and free radicals. And these free radicals are basically responsible for lightening of the color of the teeth. It is commonly used in the concentration ranging from 5 to 35 percent. The low concentration that is 5 to 7 percent is mostly recommended for at-home bleaching techniques and 25 to 35 percent is recommended for in-office bleaching kits. See hydrogen peroxide is very caustic in nature so it can cause a chemical burns. So, while using hydrogen peroxide, one should be very careful about that. It is most commonly used as superoxol. See, this superoxol is 30% hydrogen peroxide by weight and 100% by volume in pure distilled water. See, note these values. That is 30% hydrogen peroxide by weight and 100% by volume in pure distilled water. It is very commonly asked question in your entrance exam, so note these values. Being a strong oxidizing agent, it rapidly dissociates in presence of organic debris and open air. So therefore, its shelf life is only 3 to 4 months. Now let's see how this hydrogen peroxide works as a bleaching agent. See, as we have already discussed that hydrogen peroxide is a strong oxidizing agent which dissociates into water and these free radicals. And basically these free radicals, these are very reactive and they are responsible for the bleaching action. Now what happens? These free radicals, they diffuse into enamel and dentine. And once these free radicals come in contact with the organic molecules of higher molecular weight, they dissociate them into low molecular weight components. And these low molecular weight molecules, they reflect light of lesser wavelength which gives rise to the lighter color of the teeth. This is how this hydrogen peroxide or any other bleaching agent acts basically. Now let's see the another bleaching agent that is sodium perborate. See sodium perborate is a white crystalline powder which is available as monohydrate, trihydrate and tetrahydrate according to the oxygen content and the bleaching efficacy of this material. It is stable when in dry form but in the aqueous solution it breaks into sodium hydrogen borate and hydrogen peroxide and it is this hydrogen peroxide which is responsible for the bleaching action and how does this work? Uh, this we have already discussed in the previous slide the bleaching action of hydrogen peroxide. Next is carbamide peroxide. See carbamide peroxide is also known as urea hydrogen peroxide it is obtained by crystallization of hydrogen peroxide and urea. Carbamide peroxide also contains carbapole. 
Now this carbapol is a polyacrylic acid polymer which is added to the carbamide peroxide to give it a paste like consistency and it also slows down the bleaching process by reducing the rate of release of hydrogen peroxide from the carbamide peroxide. Now let's see how does this carbamide peroxide act as a bleaching agent. See when applied carbamide peroxide it divides into 6.4% inactive component that is urea and 3.6% active component hydrogen peroxide. This 3.6% active component hydrogen peroxide it is basically responsible for bleaching of the teeth. See remember these values that is 10% of carbamide peroxide is it dissociates to give 6.4% of inactive component that is urea and 3.6% of active component that is hydrogen peroxide. This is very commonly asked question in your entrance exams. So remember these values. Now let's discuss few commonly asked questions from various entrance exams based on this topic. See the first question is superoxol is 30% hydrogen peroxide combination of hydrogen peroxide and sodium perborate combination of hydrogen peroxide and sodium uh, carbamide peroxide all of the uh, all of the above see as we have already seen superoxol is 30% hydrogen peroxide by weight and 100% of volume in pure distilled water so our option a is the correct answer next question is vital bleaching causes a internal resorption b external resorption c cervical resorption and d periapical periodontitis as we have already discussed in the previous topic that the vital bleaching does not cause internal resorption or external resorption and cervical resorption external cervical resorption is the commonly seen side effect of non vital bleaching so answer d that is periapical periodontitis is the correct answer for carbamide solution used for bleaching degrades into 3% hydrogen peroxide 30% hydrogen peroxide 3% sodium perborate 30% sodium perborate this we have seen that 10% of carbamide peroxide which is commonly used concentration it dissociates to give 3.6% of active component hydrogen peroxide and 6.4% inactive component that is urea so this 3.6% hydrogen peroxide is almost similar to 3% of hydrogen peroxide so our answer is option a that is 3% hydrogen peroxide common complication following the non vital bleaching is internal resorption external apical resorption external cervical resorption or ankylosis so this we have already discussed that the common complication following non vital bleaching is external cervical resorption so option c is the correct answer following bleaching if composite restoration is required a it should be done after 7 days b it can be done immediately c treat the tooth with hydrogen peroxide for 3 minutes and d it's not possible see when a tooth is treated with the bleaching agent there is a presence of residual oxygen on the surface of the tooth which inhibits its free radical polymerization and interferes with the resin bonding so it's always recommended to wait for at least 7 days after a after the bleaching procedure but if immediate composite restoration is required we can treat the tooth with sodium ascorbate this sodium ascorbate is a buffered form of vitamin c which consists of 90% of ascorbic acid 
bound to 10% sodium. This sodium ascorbate is a powerful antioxidant which is used to remove the residual oxygen after bleaching. So if we look at these options, option A is the correct answer. I hope this topic on bleaching agents and these few questions are clear to you. Stay connected for another interesting topic and other questions. Take care and goodbye.